Hey everybody, Andy Sachs here with Coldwell Banker and most of the Around Town team. We've got Chris Kling, Jen wow. Kelly, Laura Resto, and Danielle Valenti. Thanks for joining us for our Around Town real estate podcast and video blog. And today we're going to be a little bit more casual with things. We're going to talk about what sellers expect from us and what sellers can expect from the market, some of the misconceptions maybe, rumors that they've heard. You know, we've got, I've got a pretty good mind trust of people sitting around this table with us today um, with a lot of experience selling houses in our market and we've heard it all. So, you know, it, we're just gonna throw it out there. Hopefully this will be a little more entertaining than our typical podcast. No song and dance, Lauren. <laughs> um, but let's kind of let's kick it off with a general question. You know, what is the one thing you're hearing from sellers on a, on a continuous basis when they're at a listing appointment? Like, what's the question that comes up every single time? Um, I actually do have one. They always ask, what can I do to get the house ready to sell? Like, what is the most important thing that I can kind of take care of? Is it painting? Is it staging? What is it? Okay. Um, and how can I? And how, how are you answering that? Well, we have a stager on our team. We so do? I think lots of times um, people are so excited to know that we do have a stager and we offer that benefit and that they... Um, her name is Tori Bochelle, and she comes in and she'll, you know, tell them what to do. And they don't have to do everything, but it's nice to have. It's a game. Plan. It's a game plan, right? right? It's a game plan. Yeah. What do, What are the things they need to do to sell? But why, why do you think people are asking that question? Because my opinion, like people, I think are just they're so scared of the process. They're overwhelmed. I think when you bring Tori in, you've got this game plan, like literally every single room, do A, B, and C in all these rooms. Don't go to the next room until you finish these things in this room. And it kind of takes like the stress out of the process. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are experiencing the same thing or not, or, yeah. but. Cool. Yeah, and I think it's so hard because people are so used to living in their space that they can't see past their stuff to like know what looks like clutter and what doesn't. So like having a fresh perspective yeah. helps. And, and like you said, the game plan of, move this couch here or take down all of my tchotchkes or whatever yeah. she says is like always spot on. It's just great third party validation for us also, right? We're not the bad guys on it. Someone who, this is her job. We're not decorators. We might know what looks good. We might not know how to get you there. Mm -hmm. So having her come in is just like, like a, it's a blessing for us, obviously, yeah. and for our clients. Mm -hmm. And I had an experience where, um, a house was sitting on the market. The people left their furniture in it. They moved, so it looked a little unloved. Um, and then we brought a couple weeks later. Nothing was selling. It was at the right price. Everything was the market was right. Like, and we brought in a stager who completely like changed what every room looked like with very inexpensively, yeah. and got multiple offers a week later. Yeah. So I think it makes a huge difference. Definitely. We were talking on a car ride up how important pictures are and that, I think you said it, right? You're, you're not just selling the house once, we have to sell it twice. Yeah, and I always have that conversation with sellers um, because if the buyer sees your pictures online and they don't have any interest from what they see in the pictures, they're not going to go see the house. So we have to make sure that the pictures look great, um, get the people in the door, and then we have to sell the house once they're in it. I don't think there's another team or a group of agents that prepares the listings more than we do. And I know that's a bold statement, but I think it's true. We spend so much time ourselves with stagers, with photographers, to try to get that first sale alone. Because listen, we, I think we're pretty good at compelling people to make the offers once they come in the door, but you have to get them in the door. Exactly. I, that's, you know, and it's gotta look, you know, I don't, what, are you, what are your guys' thoughts? I think so many times we hear from sellers who end up hiring us afterwards, like the pictures that were posted before either didn't look good or didn't show a true representation of the house. So what are your thoughts on that? We got wide angle lenses. We got, you know, the old school virtual tours like the fisheye effect sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys are running into any of that before, like when people compare what we're putting out for our clients and their past experiences. I, I completely agree. I think the, the wide angle that we use compared to some of the old school fishbowl, you know, you walk into some people and you'd be like, well, the old pictures look like the sheetrock was curving. And, you know, we kind of use more of the brightness from the house. So that's why we always, we use the phrase I've heard used before, um, when we go for showings or pictures, light it up like a Roman candle. So I think when we walk in there, we turn on every single lamp, the microwave light, everything. It brings out every little detail of the house. And that just makes old pictures look kind of, they could use professional. It's not going to be bright and light, but ours are light and bright and brings out everything. I think the guys we have are talented too. You know, we've, we've been working with them for over a decade. We've got another, another gentleman that we've come across also is very talented and some things that our guy, regular guy doesn't do. Mm -hmm. But it's true to form. I think people, they come in, they say, yeah, this is as nice as I saw in person. So they're not disappointed. Maybe they're surprised on the other end of things, but they're not disappointed, which I think sometimes it's misleading. Mm -hmm. so. I've definitely had people walk into a house, not of our listings, but like my buyers, I'll bring to a listing and they'll say, 
this room looked so much bigger yeah. online. Like I'm really disappointed, and and I I don't. And that kills it right there. Yeah. Like, there's no coming back from that. I feel like I hear that a lot. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. And yeah. I think that that's what we do a little bit differently is we try to just bring out the best what's already in the house, and we're not trying to be deceptive at all when when we take the pictures and whatnot. It's it's really true to to what the house is. Well, I think it's comfort for the sellers too, right? They know if they're they're packing up, getting the kids out, cleaning up, getting out of the house for an hour. They know that they have a fighting chance of this being their buyer instead of just for the sake of it, leaving the house and hoping to, oh, you know, they thought the rooms were this or that or didn't present itself as such. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not perfect, but I think we do a pretty good job overall presenting, you know, true to form. Mm -hmm. Like, are, are there any questions like that you're getting? We're hearing more as our market changes. Is there anything else out there that we're hearing? This agent, this other person is doing this in their marketing or I expect this from you guys or perceptions of the market? Uh, I think we're doing more than everybody else. I think that's what I'm hearing. Um, we have this discussion all the time in the office is you're paying the same amount for somebody else and for us and we're doing, our marketing plan is just, it's crazy. I mean, we have professionals coming in that are doing photography, they're doing video when it's necessary. We're offering 3D walkthroughs. Um, we're all over social media. Like we're just doing what other people aren't doing. For the same and cost. That, for the same cost. Yeah. And I think that that's, huge for us social media i mean it's i mean obviously this is all going to be on social media and yeah. this is you know, this is a big plan of our marketing as a brand but what are we seeing what are sellers expectations from social media and is it important to them it's different for every seller i've had ones where they're they're all on me did you post it yet today that you know i haven't seen on facebook yet right then i have others when i bring up the social media marketing they're like mm, we don't want to sell our house through social media is it generational yes yes yeah absolutely all right Shocking sometimes, you know, you'll have like, you know, one generation you'll be leaning more towards like, well, I'm gonna have to make a lot of phone calls for them because social media is not going to work. And next thing you know, they will be the ones that be like, you know, I was looking through Instagram and you're like, oh, I didn't even know you had that profile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I think to that point, there has a lot to do with also um, us being able to target the right buyer for the house too. Yeah. So if, um, you know, the, the buyer is going to be somebody who's moving up, who, who is a little bit younger and is all over social media, and that's where they're seeing houses. It's really important that we display them there then. Right. Well, we're using, with like a 55 and older community, it might not be as important, but it might still be important to be on Facebook because that's a trending a little bit older of a crowd where Instagram is more of a younger crowd. So and we completely aim our advertising and everything too. So it even helps even more for that type where we're looking to buy, where the buyers are coming from. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are we seeing anything else out there that sellers from our agents from other companies are doing? Is there anything interesting out there across? I know you're, you're big in kind of snooping around the country and what other teams agents are doing. Is there anything really cool out there? Um, I think the cool stuff that we found, we're already doing it. Okay. You know, I think we're doing the drone that a lot of people yeah. in our market aren't doing. They're doing some of the still shots, but we're adding the video in. Um, it's more engaging. Right. Um, not, I can't really think of anything else. There's, um, I mean, this is not a new idea, but I think some agents have really taken it to a different level, like in California. Um, I've seen a couple of teams out there doing like these major open houses for, yeah. you know, the million dollar houses, right, yeah. bringing in a big crowd, doing cocktail hours, like Fancy circus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, Therefore, yeah. their open houses still are like wildly populated. It's black, it's black yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. I always wonder if that'll work for us. Like, I, we, we've kicked it around a lot, and I just, I don't, I'm just so afraid we're not going to get the traffic. It's just going to people that just want to come in. Yeah. And is that a benefit to us? Yes, because we get to meet more people, and that's a lot of what our, you know, that side of our business is all about. If we're not trying to sell a home, we're trying to meet people to sell their homes. Mm -hmm. But is it really a benefit to our clients? You know, I think it's such a cool thing to promote and try to do, but I just I always, always kick that around. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, I think it's always the more eyes you get on a house, the better, because you never know where the buyer's going to come from eventually. You know, it could, true. could come from a newspaper article, mm -hmm. could come from a friend of a friend who attended the event. So I don't know. I mean, okay. I, th I just think if it, if it caught on, I think it could be a really cool thing, but it's not done around here very yeah. much that I can tell, you know, but I think it would be kind of a neat Th there's idea. There's got to be a formula that works for us up yeah. here. We can, we can figure out. Maybe not as grand, but something, yeah. you know, in between. I also think it would be cool to, to test because then you would get a lot of feedback potentially on, you know, do you think the price is right? Sure. Do, is there anything you think? Because it's, again, it's how many eyes that would yeah. come through, even if they're not the right buyer for that house. Is there something that, you know, that they might tell us that might be helpful? Some kind of constructive feedback. Yeah. That's, you know, I, I actually never looked at it from that angle. It's, yeah. it's not a bad idea. So now also find the right seller who's willing to let us 
throw a right. larger <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. party in the house. Yeah, like a, bar- a barbecue open house yeah. or something. Exactly. And, you know. I mean, and it takes the right house too. Like a, a lot of these, I think, you know, when we were kicking it around a couple of years ago, we were calling them like lifestyle open houses. So it would be like, a, you know, larger house with a big yard maybe you have a golf pro teach somebody how to you know at a putting you know putting green in the backyard or something like that so making it tailored <laughs> great to idea you. actually <laughs> go on go on that's, that's kind of brilliant just you know off the cuff but yeah. <laughs> she wasn't thinking about that the last couple years that, yeah. brainstorming on the drive up yeah. golf I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop that one as, yeah. but you get the right you know market you're targeting a person right. who might buy that house who might actually be a golfer you get a golf pro in there it could get well get listen some... demographics if it's a larger more expensive home demographics are going to say typically golf is that of a, a more affluent sport and that person might be more able to buy that more you know expensive home in. and who doesn't like a free golf lesson I mean true I could, I could use one <laughs> <laughs> not going to help but I could use one yeah. <laughs> help us oh well. god what setting seller expectations so we sit down you know, let's let's assume we've got the listing they're going to hire us the inevitably they're going to say how long is it going to take you to sell it how much money am i going to walk away with and you know what kind of communication should i expect from you so let's, just, let's start from now you know what are you guys telling people in our market right now how long is it going to take to sell this house i think it depends on what the price range is so if it's first time home buyer, we know that, I mean, in general inventory is low, but if it's a first time home buyer, we know that it'll So that like below 400 type of range. Below 400 would probably move a little faster right. than something that's in the, you know, six, seven, yeah. 800 range. Totally. Yeah, like that hot spot, like that 250 to 400 range, you could even tell them that, listen, our, our goal is to get this thing sold within 30 days. Yeah. You know, we want to move it, we price it right, we know it's going to go. But yeah, like you said, yeah. those 600 ranges, we have to prep them. We it's might be, be 60, yeah. 90, 120 days, depending on how aggressive, you know, we sell it because at that cost, most of the time, the sellers are probably losing a little bit because of depreciation over time and right. that market. Mm-hmm. So, so how do you set those expectations for somebody who's got the, you know, the $700 million house in our market? And, you know, even if they listen to us on pricing, sometimes that's not all that it takes, right? So how do you set the expectations saying, Hey, listen, I think you're worth 750. Let's list it at 765. You get a little room for negotiation, and let's try to move it out. But here's the caveat, Mr. Seller: like this, this might not go for various different reasons. We don't know what other comp- we know what other competitions in the market. Mm-hmm. Here's what you have versus them, and there's not a lot of buyers at the top of the pyramid to purchase. So how do we set those expectations? What do we say to them? Uh, I think we do everything based on data. I mean, you've taught us all that I think what we're doing that might be different than other people is we're actually sitting down we're bringing them into the office we're going through the comps with them we're showing them where their competition is on the market what sold how long it took them and I mean we're just operating from a place of showing them the facts and hopefully they can see that and trust us and go from there and we have the ability to look at a lot of like back-end data so who's looking at our Facebook ads who's looking at um, the ads online and I think you can kind of see when, when it dips, like when the views dip a little bit, maybe it's time to, time to do something, more yeah. marketing or, or something to get more eyes on but it. That's a, you know what, that's a great point because it's not all about, I think sellers are always afraid, like, well, if there's no showings, you're just gonna drop the price. Mm-hmm. And I don't think we take that approach. I think we look at it holistically, mm-hmm. like, well, maybe we missed something in marketing or maybe there's something more we can do in addition to marketing. Right. Exhaust all options. Price reduction should be the last option. Right. Yes. Right. You know, I mean, unless upfront the buy the sellers like, and this happens, you know, guys, I know this is priced a little bit high. I see the data. I know it should be 750, but I, I got to try 800. But if in a certain amount of time we'll reduce it, then that's fine. If everyone's on the same team together. But Lauren, I think that's just a tremendous point. It's like we're looking at things. And I think realtors get a bad rap because like usually you just want me to reduce it, mm-hmm. right? But there's other things for us to look at and a lot of the data. And it's, there's so much data now on Facebook and our, and our company is, supplies a lot of it to us, which is wonderful, that we can tell when people stop looking. And how can we get them to look again to make sure we're exhausting that option? It's pretty mm-hmm. powerful stuff. Mm-hmm. No. So, sellers on the market, you got you know, he's on for a hundred days. The showing, the feedback is all the same. It's all, you know, uh, the kitchen's old. The kitchen's old. The kitchen's old. Does not want to reduce it. What's our next step? So we're talking about changing up marketing. What what do we do next? How do how do we get out there to more people? Well, I think Lauren took. 
uh, your previous listing before, she took a complete different twist to it. You brought it up earlier where she freshened up the whole house. Her marketing point was, listen, mm -hmm. we're not going to go redo a kitchen or upgrade a bathroom, but mm -hmm. let's paint a couple walls, low expense. Yep. Let's change the furniture out, you know, even change the lighting. We'll redo photos. We'll do a video. And now the, you have a brand new listing yeah. coming on. Yeah. And now people are going to look at a whole new fresh approach without reducing the price. So, yeah, so. It was like amazing how that changed with just very few changes to the house. There was just a low, low cost. I mean, at the end of the day, what, a couple grand probably? I think it was, yeah, like I think it was between 1500 and 2000 for staging three rooms. We didn't do the whole house. We just took all the furniture out, just did the important rooms so you could yep. see and a little paint. And those pictures showed incredible, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it was all contemporary to what kind of all of our peers are looking to yeah. buy. Mm -hmm. So just a change of perspective. And you said within that first couple of days after multiple you, offers. yeah, multiple, mm -hmm. that's amazing. I think I would compliment all of you guys, and I think our team is pretty good at it. We're not afraid to stop something that's not working, right? I think it's oftentimes listings sit on the market forever because they're just doing the same thing, right? It's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over with the same result. I think that's a, it's a, a, a plight of our, of our um, of our industry is we just sit and wait, but we sit and wait. We're not doing anybody any good. We're not doing our business any good. That's how we make money, and we're not certainly not doing our clients any good to sell their home and help them move on to whatever stage they're trying to accomplish. So I think it speaks a lot to you guys that we're asking. You know what? We need to stop this. We need to try something different. Mm -hmm. and I think sellers really appreciate it too. It hurts the house more and more too. The longer it sits, because then every buyer is now in the mindset of what's wrong with that house mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what is the thing what that is wrong yeah. nothing's wrong with it we're just not seeing it through the right lens so let's switch that and it's tough for us when someone says well, what's wrong with it and we're trying to defend our listing to a buyer's agent mm -hmm. well there's nothing wrong with it it's if you do this you do this you paint and a little bit of furniture it'd be great and then the other agents looks like but you're not doing that so what's wrong with it mm -hmm. so by us changing it we can say listen we freshened it up we did this we did this and then a buyer's agent can go back to their client mm -hmm. and sell it Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Well, I think what the thing with our team too is we're a busy team. We, we have a lot of clients. We're in a lot of houses. We know the market really well. We know what's selling and what's not. So we're able to go back to our sellers and say, this is what we need to do because we can see past clutter or paint or furniture. But the average buyer can't. And as like we said before, they they, yeah. as much as they yeah. say they can, they can't. They say they can all the time. But and yeah. we, like we were talking about before, I mean, they still see those pictures online. They say, oh, I've seen this house before online. They don't even want to waste their time going into it yeah. if they don't like the way it looks. You know? that, that's a really good point. Like the amount of buyers we have and the team as a pipeline is our weekends are literally just house after house after house. We get to see what other agents kind of told their sellers and like, I got to use that on my next listing because that just sold it to my buyers. Or, or why buyers aren't buying it might be even more important. Yeah, so right. we need to avoid doing this. In Very our true. Right. So, so where's the market going for sellers? Loaded question, no <laughs> right answer. <laughs> but I figure it's it's always, everyone wants to know, right? This, we sit down with the seller, how's the market doing? Is it a buyer's market still? Is it turning over? I read in the national reports that home sales or, or prices are going to be up 4%. That's awesome. So we should list higher, right? <laughs> what are you guys seeing? Again, I think it depends on the price, price point mm -hmm. that yeah. the house yeah. is in. But I mean, I, I think typically in the spring, and I think we, we are seeing it in our own listings that we have coming up, there's a lot coming on the market that is good. Like there's a lot of new listings that look nice that are hopefully going to sell quickly, you know, mm -hmm. but it depends on the price point, I guess. Yeah, our market is very price point driven. We all know that yeah. firsthand. Um, mm -hmm. Like we already talked about before, anything under 400, when we have sellers that are listing in that market, we're preparing them. It's going to go quickly. So Better we're going to have a lot of showings. Yeah. Exactly. And and the higher end, it's not going to move as quickly. So again, to, to the points we've been making, you really have to make sure that your house stands out against the competition. Right. Totally. Totally. I think that we're going to always battle the national perception in our market. I think Connecticut obviously has some very steep economic issues and it's going to keep us from growing, you know, barring some substantial change in the next decade. I don't think we're going to really drop it. I think we're going to stay the same overall and we're going to continue with the same kind of lower price point moving. Now, with that said, at every price point, if a buyer walks in and goes, yep, there's value here, they buy it. Yep. It could be a million dollar home, a $2 million home, a $300,000 home, a $100,000 home. At every price point, they have to walk in and go, yep, because they're super educated, right? They're, they're not like buyers of yesteryear. They're all over Zill, they're all, for good or bad. Right. They have so much information. 
And so it's got to all line up for them like instantly when they walk in. And we, we can feel it when they see yeah. it, you know. So it's, it's, um, oh, it's going to be an interesting year, that's for sure. <laughs> Any other thoughts on the sale, guys? Anything else? Anybody selling? Anything interesting we've heard? All right, let's wrap it up on the sales side then. All right. All right. My name is Andy Sachs. This is the Around Town team. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. It's a good time, a little bit different than usual, but please tune into our podcast, our video blog, and uh, check out our next one because we're going to talk about buyers. <laughs>